Hi guys, Alec Pierce, Scuba Tech Tips. Uh, now this is a little obscure tech tip, but you know, I was watching the other day, I was watching one of my buddies, another heavy hitter on YouTube, Simply Scuba, <laughs> over in the UK. Hi guys, and uh, I'm going to come and visit you guys, by the way, Yeah, probably uh, early next year. And we'll do a video together, Simply Scuba and Alec Pierce, it should be fun. Anyway, uh, the, the, the uh, very nice young man on there uh, was talking about Overpressure valves, pressure relief valves, there's different words for them. Pressure relief, overpressure relief, whatever you want to call it. And it's just a little silly little thing like this. Uh, you know, it's not a really big deal. This is one example. There's many different types of examples. And, uh, and uh, these go into the first stage of a scuba regulator, okay? You don't have one. No, you don't have one. But some divers do. So the question came to my mind. I said, now this chap is talking about, I think he had a Mares and another. He did a couple of videos about these. And certainly among tech divers, and certainly among divers in very cold water areas, like the UK, uh, they are more familiar with overpressure valves. So what is an overpressure valve? Why would you want one? Do you want one? Do you need one? What's it for? Okay. The first stage of your regulator delivers air at approximately 150 psi to the second stage, which fits in your mouth, and that's you breathe from that back and forth. Now, <clears throat> it doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. So put it out of your mind. But let's pretend that the first stage malfunctions somehow. Something is wrong with the first stage. You haven't serviced it. You've got a bit of dirt in there, whatever's happened. And so the first stage starts to malfunction. Now, interestingly enough, when the first stage malfunctions, Fortunately for us divers, it does not cut off the airflow. That you see opposite. What happens is it gives you too much air. That's right. That's good news, right? First stage breaks down. What happens? You get too much air. Hey, you can live with that. You can live with too much air. You can't live without enough if you follow that. However, <clears throat> the hose that runs from the first stage to the second stage is rated for 250 psi, usually about 250 psi. If the first stage malfunctions and the air pressure starts to flow through, the air pressure starts to build up, eventually it'll reach 250 psi and this hose could blow. Just that simple. So in order to prevent that, you have an overpressure valve. An overpressure valve, which you insert into the first stage. And as the pressure builds up past the normal IP, normal intermediate pressure of 150, it starts to build up and gets to about 200 psi, getting up to that dangerous level where a low pressure hose might blow. This little pressure valve, little spring-loaded seat, releases the air so that the hose doesn't blow. Okay, You have no air at that point, but they don't care about that. They don't care if you drown as long as the hose doesn't blow. You've got to protect those hoses, right? <laughs> Kidding a little bit, of course, here, but that's what it's for. Just that simple. Overpressure valve on the first stage is to prevent the low-pressure hoses from exploding from the increasing pressure coming from the first stage because it's not working properly. Well, do I need one? No, you don't need one. 99% of us don't need one because, as I'll show you in just a moment, with a standard scuba system, you have a built-in overpressure valve. I'll show you that in just a second. So why are these around? Why does Simply Scuba and many, many other dive stores, why do they have these available and what do divers use them for? Well, a lot of divers <clears throat> have a second or a supplemental scuba tank, small tank sometimes or larger, that they use specifically to fill their dry suit or for other purposes. Okay, So they will not necessarily have a standard second stage on it. In that particular case, the pressure can build up, won't be released, and the hose could blow. So in that application, where a diver has a secondary tank, a first stage, but it's not feeding a regulator, it's feeding a dry suit or another device, and there are lots of them available, then he would install in the first stage one of these overpressure valves. So if that first stage malfunctions, it doesn't blow up the hose. Just that simple. So it's a rather obscure use. However, you, if you use dry suits, as I mentioned, in, uh, in, the, in the coast of America or in the UK for sure, lots of areas of the world are very, very cold diving, and they will often have a separate tank to inflate their dry suit so they're not using their air supply, their breathing air supply. They have a separate tank for that, and they need the overpressure valve. So why don't we need one? 
Why don't you know, ordinary divers? What about our regulators? What do they malfunction? Why, what would keep them from blowing up? Well, it's very simple. Take a little look here, Kevin. Maybe you can move down. Can you see this whole thing? Here's a pretty standard regulator, okay? Tank of air, first stage, second stage. Now, when you turn on the air, psh, like this, it pressurizes. That is, the first stage delivers air to the hose at 150 PSI. IP, intermediate pressure, 150, and then you breathe from that. And every time you breathe air out of here, the first stage gives more air, keeping it at that 150 PSI. And 150 PSI is quite safe. The hose is good for about 200 or 250. Okay, <clears throat> so how, how could it possibly be a problem? And if it is a problem, if the first stage is a problem, what releases it? Do I need one of these valves? No, you don't. Watch. First of all, we need to measure. I want to show you the intermediate pressure. And I have shown you in previous videos how to measure your intermediate pressure. To measure the intermediate pressure, you need an intermediate pressure gauge, an IP gauge, something like this. Very cheap to make, very easy to make. You can buy them. Well, it simply needs a, 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 a spigot. When I call a spigot, it's actually a, a quick detach fitting, just as it's on the end of your buoyancy compensator, inflator, same thing, and a couple of small fittings and a, and a cheap gauge. Now, this gauge only has to go to 200 pounds because you're only going to measure up to about 150. Now, you can put this, you can actually snap this right in to your um, uh, um, BC inflate hose. It's the same fitting. So if you are working on a complete regulator system like this, or you want to measure your own intermediate pressure, you have one of these little gauges, and you snap it onto your BC fitting, turn on the air, and this will go up to 130, 140, 150, whatever is the specified IP for your regulator. They do vary a little wee bit. And you can say, okay, IP is good. Great. Uh, in this particular case, just for illustration purposes, I've made up as a little fitting. So rather than having a hose, <clears throat> I can put this gauge right into this fitting like so. And now we'll be able to watch the IP. Let me just double check here, Kevin. Can you see that gauge, Kevin? If I turn the pressure on now, you can see the gauge pops up, and it pops up to about 160 PSI. Okay. So now what happens if that, if that increases? And what happens if the first stage there's a malfunction. I haven't kept it serviced, haven't kept it clean, uh, have been letting water in there. And so the high pressure seat has got a little bit of dirt on it, a little bit of salt maybe. And salt is very, very hard. Salt crystals, once they, once they uh, dry, are extremely hard. Uh, and so if the salt crystal is there and it comes down against the seat at 3,000 PSI, it'll actually make a little groove, a little mark on the seat, and then it'll start to free flow. And as it free flows, pressure builds up. So I can illustrate what will happen with a standard regular like this, if the, if the IP increases. And to do that very simply, I will just increase the intermediate pressure. With this particular regulator, you use an Allen key, a big Allen key. fits in the top of the regulator. You turn this and the IP increases. On other regulators, it might be a, a slot that you would increase. On some regulators, it uses a different device to, to adjust the intermediate pressure. So here's what I'm going to do. We have this under pressure now, Kevin. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the intermediate pressure beyond what it should be, and we'll see what happens. Okay, here we go. Exactly. You see what happens, Kevin? The intermediate pressure is going up as I increase it, and it gets to a certain point, and the second stage releases it. Yes. So, what's this all about? Well, I asked, do you need to have an overpressure valve on your regulator system for scuba diving? The answer is no, because you have one. That's right. The second stage of modern regulators is a downstream valve, which means that as the air comes from the hose, it pushes the valve away. It doesn't try to seat the valve. It actually pushes the valve away to let the air through. And that valve is set for 150 PSI, standard IP. So if the IP is at 150 and the valve is set to close at 150, nothing happens. But if the first stage malfunctions, and the intermediate pressure starts to increase, it gets up to 160, 170, it pushes the valve out of the way, and the air leaks out of your second stage. Overpressure valve. Same. You don't need two, that's for sure. You got one here. Even your safe second for your uh, octopus, your octopus acts exactly the same way. One or the other of your two second stages will free flow if the intermediate pressure increases. Acts as an overpressure valve. So there you go. A little bit of information about Simply Scuba. You can go to the Simply Scuba YouTube and, and uh, see. It was just recently, I think, I saw those um, overpressure videos on, on their, uh, on their uh, uh, video. So you can take a look at that if you want. And there's a bit of information. Maybe I answered a few more questions for you.
Okay, guys, talk to you soon. Alec Pierce, Tech Tips.